Hello there! In this video, I'm going to talk about the Spadina streetcar. This is a streetcar line with a history in two parts, with its second part being the most successful and the line becoming essentially the standard bearer for the TTC streetcar network. So, let's get into the video. The origins of the Spadina streetcar can be found in the mid-1800s, 1878 specifically. In that year, the Toronto Street Railway would begin operations on a route using horse-drawn cars operating from King Street to College Street. In 1883, this route would be extended north to Bloor Street. In 1891, the newly established Toronto Railway Company would end service on the Spadina streetcar and replace it with the Beltline streetcar. This was a circular route which operated in both directions around Bloor Street, Sherburn Street, King Street, and Spadina Avenue, and you can watch my video on the Beltline Streetcar to learn more about it. This route would operate like this until 1923, when the TTC abolished the service as part of its efforts to update the streetcar network it had inherited. Streetcar service along Spadina would operate along a tree-lined right-of-way down the middle of Spadina Avenue. This right-of-way would unfortunately be torn up at some point to make way for an extra car lane in each direction. In 1923, with the abolition of the Beltline streetcar, the Spadina streetcar would be restored, operating from a crossover at Front Street to a crossover at Bloor Street. On May 23, 1927, a new bridge crossing the railway tracks south of Front Street would open, and with it the Spadina streetcar would be extended south to a crossover at what is today Lakeshore Boulevard, but was Fleet Street at the time. Since the Spadina streetcar had no turn-back loops and only used crossovers, the TTC would operate dual-ended Toronto Civic Railway cars on the line for the remainder of its first incarnation. That first incarnation would come to an end in 1948, as that was the year the TTC would temporarily convert the Spadina streetcar to a bus service, citing electricity shortages caused by the rapid growth the city was experiencing after World War II. This may have been an excuse though, as the TTC may have already been eyeing the possibility of ending the Spadina streetcar due to its dual-ended cars being well past their expiration date. The rest of the streetcar network had transitioned to single-ended cars used, utilizing turnback loops, of which none existed along Spadina, and the TTC seemed to have no interest in constructing any. The TTC may have also felt that a bus along Spadina could do the same job while being more versatile. Whatever the case may be, on October 10th, 1948, the Spadina streetcar would be permanently abolished, ending 70 years of service. Spadina alongside the North Young Streetcar were the last routes in the network to use dual-ended cars, so with their abolition on October 10th, Toronto would no longer use dual-ended streetcars. Even though the Spadina Streetcar was gone, there was still some service along a portion of Spadina Avenue, as the Harbord Streetcar would run along Spadina between Dundas and Harbord Streets. The abolition of the Harvard Streetcar in 1966 would mark the true end of streetcar service along Spadina Avenue. After that, the tracks between King Street and College Street would remain in use for short turns and non-revenue movements. All the other tracks, those north of College Street and south of King Street would be torn up or paved over. Service along Spadina Avenue after the abolition of the Spadina Streetcar would be handled by the 77 Spadina Bus, which itself is a bus route that exists within the city's pop culture, but I'll discuss that should I ever do a series on the city's bus routes. The 77 Spadina Bus would immediately operate north of Bloor Street to DuPont Street, which wouldn't have been possible with the streetcar without first building more tracks. This lends credence to the idea that the TTC saw a Spadina bus as more flexible than the old Spadina streetcar. Only 25 years after the Spadina streetcar was abolished, the TTC and the City of Toronto would decide in 1973 that Spadina Avenue should once again have a streetcar route. The original proposal for the new Spadina streetcar would be a route running north from Clarence Square at Wellington Street to Spadina Station on Line 2. This would require the reinstallation of tracks north of College Street to Bloor Street, as well as the tracks south of King Street to either Wellington Street or Front Street. 
This plan never came to fruition though as local residents around Clarence Square objected to the streetcar terminating there over fear of the disruptive noise caused by the streetcars. The project would go quiet until the 1980s when the city of Toronto began to redevelop its harbour front and looked at using a streetcar line as an anchor for said development. The Spadina LRT would be part of this plan with a new streetcar line operating along Spadina Avenue in a private right of way down to Toronto's harbour front where it would connect to the proposed harbour front LRT. This plan wasn't without its critics though, as merchants along Spadina Avenue feared that this project would turn Spadina Avenue into a pedestrian unfriendly area, with the LRT acting as a rapid transit line, moving people through the area quickly and not really being for local use. They would also worry about the loss of on-street parking caused by the expansion of Spadina Avenue as well. It's worth mentioning that the original proposal for the Spadina LRT didn't just call for a streetcar line, but also the expansion of Spadina Avenue itself to six lanes wide, plus the streetcar right-of-way. The streetcar right-of-way itself was to originally be similar to what is seen on the Queensway using track and ballast that was to be raised six inches above the road. Local residents who objected to the project would refer to this as a Berlin Wall down the middle of the street. The hysteria around the project was so bad that local media would compare the Spadina LRT to the Scarborough RT and protest flyers would appear showing an elevated guideway like that of the Scarborough RTs running down the middle of Spadina Avenue. Due to all of this nonsense, Metro Council would only approve the first phase of the proposed Harborfront LRT while the Spadina LRT would be sent back to the drawing board. The TTC and the City of Toronto would set about easing the concerns of local residents by making changes to the project. Firstly, the line would no longer be referred to as an LRT and would instead simply be known as the Spadina Streetcar. The LRT moniker was purely political in the first place though, so this name change had no effect on the project itself. What would change the project though was the right of way, which would no longer be a track and ballast right of way elevated 6 inches above the ground, but instead the tracks would be set in a cobblestone right of way elevated only 2 inches off the ground. As well, Spadina Avenue would remain a 4 lane road with an on street parking lane preserved in each direction. The right of way would also be tree lined as the original right of way from the early 1900s was tree lined. Not only would this be a great aesthetic choice, but it would help further integrate the streetcar into the local area. Lastly, the TTC had originally planned to construct the loop at Spadina Station at the surface level. Local residents from the Annex neighborhood, however, were concerned over the noise from the streetcars, so the TTC would instead opt to have this turnback loop at Spadina Station put underground. In May of 1992, the Spadina Streetcar project would receive its final approval and construction would begin. Five years later, on July 27, 1997, the 510 Spadina would enter service bringing the streetcar back to Spadina Avenue after a 31-year absence. The opening of the 510 Spadina would also mark the end of both the 77 Spadina bus and the 604 Harborfront LRT, both of which were absorbed into the new streetcar line. This line would operate from Spadina Station to Union Station along Spadina Avenue and Queens Quay. The opening of the line wasn't without a couple of hiccups though. While the project was completed under budget, in order to meet the opening date of July 27th, the switches at Dundas and Adelaide streets were not completed. These last projects wouldn't be completed until March of 1999 with the opening of Charlotte Loop. This loop was added after the line had opened to help the TTC reroute its streetcars more efficiently through the area. Up until 1999, every second Spadina car would loop through Queen's Key Loop. The loop itself was apparently a big success, as while it costs $200,000 to build, it saves the TTC around $300,000 in operational efficiencies. Due to the large number of collisions between streetcars and cars making left turns in the aftermath of the opening of the line, the TTC would install barriers along portions of the right of way to keep drivers off the tracks. In 2000, the barriers would be replaced with more permanent concrete curbs. 
Despite these growing pains, the TTC was happy with the 510 Spadina, and within four years of its opening, ridership had grown from 26,000 riders per day as the 77 Spadina bus, to 35,000 riders per day as the 510 Spadina. This number would grow to 45,000 riders per day in 2005. As the years went on, the 510 Spadina would only further solidify its place in the TTC network as its ridership continued to grow. The success of the right-of-way along Spadina Avenue as well as Queen's Quay would be the model the TTC would use going forward for new streetcar construction. It would also inspire the rebuild of the St. Clair right-of-way which like Spadina's had been removed only to be rebuilt decades later. On September 6, 2015, overnight service would return to Spadina Avenue after it had been abolished in 1992. The 510 Spadina would also be the first route to receive the new Flexity streetcars, and by January 3, 2016 it had become the first fully accessible streetcar line in the network. Lastly, during the summer months on weekends you could also ride one of the TTC's remaining PCC streetcars along Spadina. However, with the conversion of the route to full panograph use, it is unknown if the PCC heritage run along Spadina will return. While the 510 Spadina has been a roaring success, it is hard to say what happens now going forward. There is nothing much that can be done with the route from an expansion perspective as both its northern and southern terminals are pretty much set in stone. That's not to say that there won't be any major changes to the line in the future though. The 510 Spadina will have a connection to the future Ontario line at the station planned for the Queen Street and Spadina Avenue intersection. As well, the Harbourfront West and East Bayfront LRT projects will require a major rebuild of the Union Station Loop. As part of this rebuild, the TTC will temporarily reroute the 510 Spadina to the exhibition for the duration of construction. Beyond this though, after being abolished for no reason at all, the Spadina streetcar has come back in a big way and secured its place in Toronto's transit network. While the line may not extend beyond its current route, it is certainly not going anywhere anytime soon. The success of the Spadina streetcar's resurrection though does make you wonder if it could be done again on other former streetcar routes if we put our minds and money to it. But with that, I will end this video here. Thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button because there are more videos like it on the channel and there are more videos like it on the way. If there's anything you want to say about the Spadina streetcar, don't be afraid to do so in the comment section down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.